Good morning. I'm Michael Lipinski again. This morning, we're going to continue all our BIM instruction uh, covering uh, BIM execution plans. Last session, we discussed understanding project roles, staffing for BIM, and the management people inside the BIM project team. But today, I'd like to touch on the, um, the goal of establishing a BIM execution plan. Because to optimize your results with BIM, you need to start with the end in mind. Although a lot of tasks are possible with BIM, before you draw your first wall, you will want to create a BIM project execution plan. We go into more detail about creating these plans and some resources for them in the following chapters, working with consultants. But essentially, a BIM plan helps to drive direction of the modeling effort and modeling outcomes. How, you will, how will your consulting team share direction of the modeling effort and modeling outcomes? How will your consultant team share models? Will your project need to provide BIM deliverables such as a reference model or databases in the construction operations building information exchange format? Does the owner have expectations for a model deliverable for operations and management? All of those possibilities and more are explored and documented in a PXP. It gives the project team a definitive outcome to develop and enrich the models. Creating a standard BIM project execution planning process will help project teams to plan and execute the required processes to achieve the anticipated goals. Using a PXP template and a plan methodology, the project team members should actively pursue these concepts. All parties should clearly understand and communicate the strategic goals for implementing BIM on the project. Teams should understand and communicate their roles and responsibilities in the project's execution. The plan should outline resources, training, or other com competencies necessary to successfully implement BIM for the intended users. The baseline plan should provide a goal for measuring progress throughout the project. The plan should provide a benchmark for describing the process to future participants who join the project. Teams carry additional process risk when, impl when implemented by teams that are not experienced with BIM process. As many team members, managers, and users alike are not familiar with the strategies and processes of this workflow. If the process is well planned and communicated, the project team will set expectations of what is to be done and how, thereby, reducing the overall risk to the project. To ensure a successful project execution plan, planning process, the team should do the following things with its project execution plan. Modify the plan to meet the project's needs. Build the plan with the entire consulting team. Create a level of detail or an MDS with the entire consulting team to facilitate model and staff planning unless it is already required by the owner. Review the plan early and often, making needed changes as project experience grows. For those of you who are responsible for de developing the PXP for your team, begin your plan by referencing industry-based templates such as Penn State Project Execution Plan or the Autodesk BIM deploy Deployment Plan that can provide you with shortcuts to a well-organized and consistent PXP process. Determine what is needed by your project teams and then modify the plan to match your requirements. Additional language specific to the type of facility and construction should be added to the plan to make it more appropriate. A comprehensive PXP should include these sections. Statement of project goals and objectives, intended BIM uses, team structure and deliverables, roles and responsibilities, data transfers, phase-based data requirements, intended authoring analysis and aggregation tools, governance information. By doing these things, project teams should have no problem developing a comprehensive project execution plan that will benefit them on a daily basis. Optimizing the BIM process. According to the National Institute of Building Science, BIM is defined as a digital representation of physical and functional characteristics of a facility.
that serves as a shared knowledge resource for information about a facility forming a reliable base for decisions during its life cycle from its inception onward. Although this is the definition of the noun used to represent the electronic data, the form, the verb form of building information modeling is equally important. Form follows function. BIM is both a tool and a process, and one cannot realistically exist without the other. Building information modeling implies an increased attention to more informed design and enhanced collaboration. Simply relying on tools to replace your current processes without an updated corresponding methodology will yield limited success. In fact, it may even become more cumbersome than using traditional CAD tools to execute project work. Regardless of the design and production workflow you have established in the past, moving to BIM is going to be, to be a change. Moving to BIM is a shift in how designers and contractors approach the design and documentation process throughout the entire life cycle of the project, from concept to occupancy. In a traditional CAD-based workflow, represented in, in a traditional CAD-based workflow, each view is drawn separately with no inherent relationship between drawings. In this type of production environment, the team creates plans, sections, elevation schedules, and perspectives as standalone entities in multiple files and must coordinate any changes between these views manually. In AutoCAD, each individual DWG file has to be communicating with the drawing that it is externally referenced to, <laughs> absolutely or relatively. And you're in charge of keeping those paths linked. A computer is supposed to do that. In a BIM-based workflow, the team creates 3D parametric models to generate the drawings necessary for documentation and analysis. Plans, sections, elevations, schedules, and perspectives are all byproducts of creating a building information model, as, sh as shown in the figures I have posted prior. This enhanced representation methodology not only allows for high coordinated documentation, but also provides the basic model geometry necessary for analysis, such as daylighting studies, energy usage simulation, material takeoffs, <laughs> material takeoffs, and so on. Ident identifying and planning BIM uses. We encourage you to explore ongoing research from organizations such as Penn State University, Building Smart International, and the United Kingdom BIM Task Group. You can find more information on Penn, Penn State's website, http colon forward slash forward slash BIM dot PSU dot edu. Anyway, Penn State has developed a catalog of BIM uses and project implement, implementation guidelines that have been adopted into the National BIM Standards of the United States Version 3. You can find information on this at hypertext transfer protocol colon forward slash forward slash national BIM standard dot org. Another important aspect of supporting numerous BIM uses is the development of open standards. The organization known as Building Smart, www.buildingsmart.org, provides a global platform for the development of each standard of such standards. The United Kingdom based BIM task group, www.bimtaskgroup.org is helping the region adopt BIM practices through building standards and educational support. Groups from a number of regional chapters around the world are generating information exchange standards that will soon have a profound impact on the ways in which we share model data with our clients and partners. The following are some of the latest developments. Industry Foundation Classes, Version 4, IFC. Construction Operations Building Information Exchange, or COBE. Specifies Properties Information Exchange, SPIE, and the BIM Collaboration Format, BCF. For a general overview of the approach to standardizing exchanges with information delivery manuals, IDMs, and model view definitions, MBDs, visit www.buildsmart-tech.org slash specifications. As the industry grows, I'm sorry, as the industry continues to build processes 
around the technology behind BIM, its potential continues to grow. Many applications are possible using building information modeling. As more and more benefits are achievable through BIM, teams find new uses to explore and develop. We are trying to plan and manage your organization's BIM and methodology. It's important to think about the use of these processes and technology to achieve your project goals. One of the primary ways of understanding this is through BIM uses. The many uses can be organized into five basic activities. Gather, generate, analyze, communicate, and realize. Gather to collect and manage building information. Generate to create information about the building. Analyze to examine aspects or components of the building to make better decisions about how to plan, design, construct, or operate it. Communicate to share to shared information about a building collaboratively. Realize to build or manage a physical element using building data. Understanding how benefits are derived from these uses will help focus your team's efforts in planning, managing, and governing BIM processes. Gather. As why would I think of a hunter-gatherer group? Are you a vegetarian or a meat eater? <laughs> Gather. As architects pursue work and plan awarded projects, they gather information about budgets required functionality, site context, and anything else of significance that is required to make the best decisions for the project. In an analog process, this information may be gathered in the, the this information may be gathered in the building program, a contract or even a cartoon set of drawings required. The advent of BIM processes and technology is changing this. BIM not only allows the acquisition of smartly acquired contextual data about the project, but also becomes an improved repository for information gathered in traditional ways. One example of these traditional processes is the creation of the space program. Space programs are usually developed by interviewing user groups that are to occupy the building and gather information about the things that they do and the equipment that they need in the agencies of the spaces they occupy. <coughs> <clears throat> These processes are collected in a spreadsheet or in graphical layouts that explain their qualities. This type of data is typically used in parallel with the design process, with many planners manually pulling information into computer-aided CAD layouts. With BIM, this process takes on a more evolved approach to connecting design data to programmatic requirements. Using a BIM process, a designer can input spatial information directly into the model database, even before conceptual massing or area plans are generated. This allows the designer to take directly from the program information to lay out a design and get instant feedback on whether it meets the required tolerances for these requirements. Another example of gathering intelligent data could be in the form of laser scanning. There are sophisticated technologies that allow for the generation of point clouds. Google Leica scanners, and you'll see what I mean. In any event, the generation of these spatial, spatially located points can be used as an accurate underlay in the building of existing conditions. With millions of points available, designers have at their fingertips a massive amount of data in which to begin to understand the context of their designs. This has an incredible application. This has incredible applications for complex renovations or spatially challenged sites, or even historical historical preservation efforts. Through this kind of information gathering, the qualification and quantification of data can empower the design teams to understand both the implicit and explicit attributes of, this, of its projects. These processes can also help support estimating and cost forecasting efforts. During the early design phases of the building, quantities may be generally estimated but become more certain as the contract documents are created and construction processes proceed. All along, the stored information becomes more and more accurate with respect to the design intent. Toward the latter part of the construction process and into operations and maintenance, processes can help establish real-time performance measurements within facilities to help owners understand energy use, usage, operational costs, and many other metrics. As an example, an integrated operations and maintenance O&M system may be tracking electrical costs on an hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly basis to help owners understand where they're maximizing their energy investments and where there is waste. And what they may need to reduce. Information gathering can be important throughout the entire life cycle of a BIM project. Excuse me. <laughs> G 
generate. One of the most common aspects of building information modeling, and the one most accessible to new users, is the creation of intelligent geometry. As users draw a wall, a mass, or a new level, they are generating not only form, but also data that helps them make informed design decisions. For example, when a wall is drawn in an authoring tool, that object can immediately have attributes such as length, width, and height. It may also have multiple materials, structural and finish, as well as cost and fire rating. In a CAD process, the users must maintain the intelligence that they attribute to the objects they are drawing. They may be able to quickly generate four lines to represent a wall that could understand length and width, but that's where the distinction stops. These CAD drawings, although they can contain additional information, are inherently based on the output, whereas building information models inform the outputs rather than vice versa. A wall in a model database is the design. In CAD, the outputs represent what the users conceptually maintain in their mind. As smart as we are as architects, we can't maintain all the information needed to be communicated to the contractor in building our designs. That's where BIM can begin to support us by maintaining the information for us. When users generate information about the project through both geometry and integrated data, they are prescribing attributes, arranging elements, and determining real-world dimensions within the context of the life cycle of the building. The designers during the planning and design phases are the primary generators of geometry and data. During the construction phase of the project, the subcontractors will manage most of the data in the models. For sophisticated BIM projects, the construction phase management of, an as, of as built data can be created to build a foundation for operation for the operations phase, where that information could be used to operate and maintain the building. This database that they might maintain could be uploaded with new information throughout its entire life cycle. This might include new equipment installed or renovations made to existing structures. And this is where Maximo and IBM come in. We're going to get to that. As experts, I'm sorry, I jumped ahead. I'll reiterate what I said. For sophisticated BIM projects, the construction phase management of as-built data can be created to build a foundation for the operations phase where that information could be used to operate and maintain the building. This database that they might maintain could be updated with new information throughout its entire life cycle. This might include a new, new equipment installed or renovations made to existing structures. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. As experts generate both geometry and data for the project, they're specifying qualities in generating design data. The planner of a building may define particular spaces in the building just as a structural engineer may define a structural grid. Later in this project, a contractor might define a specific construction sequence as attributes of materials, just as the owner's construction manager may define the need for a specific piece of equipment. Because all of these ideas are generated inside the building information model or linked systems that influence this database, generation of building data can happen in every phase. As designers make decisions about the spatial information or the spatial configurations of the building, they have a range of elements in three dimensions. This is the beginning of 3D coordination process, <coughs> which is a major asset to build BIM practices in terms of collaboration and problem solving. This can begin with the arrangement of spaces, move to an arrangement of structural systems through mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems, and end with coordination of trades that are constructing the building. Because of all these aspects that occupy space and therefore have some relationship with one another, the model becomes a spatial organizer for this arrangement. You're going to meet new people. Before the opportunities that BIM provides, subcontractors can only determine technical issues with installations as services were being installed. This might include a piece of ductwork that does not quite have enough room to move around, a beam or a doorway that does not have enough clearance from the edge to the stair riser. Because BIM provides the ability to simulate design conditions, the spatial coordination between designers, engineers, and consultants can be addressed prior to construction and installation. We all now have the ability to find mistakes within a simulated environment 
and provide corrective actions during the design phase of the project. This ability to solve problems early in the arrangement of these three-dimensional objects affords designers and builders a great opportunity of designing better outcomes with much more cost-effective and timely solutions. In the end, it's much cheaper to fix it in the computer than it is in the field. The sizing geometry also is an important aspect to the generation of information in these models. Just as spatial organization is important, the ability to estimate the correct dimensional aspects of building systems in the specification of specific equipment is important. Generating sizing information in a 3D model might take the form of creating types based on standard industry specifications. Being able to specifically model objects that have real sizes and tolerance help designers to be able to make the right decisions about specifying common building elements and complex building systems. Typical authoring programs have tolerances built in for the level of detail that's required to have buildings constructed accurately. Users have the capability of modeling such much more accurately than they ever could in the field. Of course, the caution here is that teams need to realize that though they can be more accurate in the model, the ultimate purpose of the model is to get the building built and into operation efficiently and effectively. This means sizes should be based on the requirements of the construction trades, and more information or accuracy beyond that is not needed. However, where Bill BIM shines above typical CAD processes is its ability to share truth. It is much more work to hide the true sizes than it is to display them accurately. This may frustrate some users who are used to applying their own dimensions until they realize that the models represent what they designed. Whether it is to be, whether it is to a standard dimension or not, nominal dimensions, <coughs> actual dimensions. Question. What are the dimensions of a two by four? Analyze. The primary purpose for the authoring environment is creation and not analysis. Because geometry and data are combined in a single database, confidence in that interaction allows us to begin to understand what it is and what it will create. This first step into analysis begins at the planning stages. However, it's common to pull information from the authoring environment into one specifically built for analysis. You'll find that many processes and tools specifically built for analysis work in parallel and sometimes perpendicular to model authoring. The real value in BIM beyond design documentation is the interoperability to model authoring. The real value in BIM beyond design documentation is the interoperability of the model geometry and metadata between applications. Consider energy modeling, for example. It's a good career path to follow. BIM environmental analysis time comparisons. In some instances, models authored in one platform might, may not work directly with analysis platforms in other platforms. So the trend of these tools is moving towards better integration or analysis tools that are embedded inside the authoring applications. The programs are being programmed so that they can be speaking the same language to a certain extent. There's a constant influx of shared data with different file extensions. And I'll just jump ahead real quick. Think about it. CAD, DWG, Revit, RVT, Navisworks, NWD, uh, Microdesk, DGN. Now, these software platforms are all involving and they're competing with each other. But the, the key to success is having a platform that allows for the interoperability of all the users' specific software platforms that they're using. So as to then better aggregate. Think of this as a filter, a translator, if you will, uh, a physics translator. It's a good way of thinking about it. All right, I'm going to jump ahead a second. Communicate. Communication is important. Using BIM to better visualize a building is a powerful way to communicate design intent. Creating documentation visualizing using BIM gives teams the added advantage of being able to communicate the design of the project in 3D where it is 
more accessible to pro project participants. It is especially persuasive for those who are typically involved directly with the construction process, but are still important decision makers. Owners can benefit greatly from this type of communication. In this, visualization is an important tool for making design and construction decisions. Although 3D visualization was initially conceived as one of the low-hanging fruits of a BIM workflow, this benefit has led to an explosion. <laughs> Anyone who knows me can, can tell you all about that. <laughs> I'll read it again. Although 3D visualization was initially conceived as one of the low-hanging fruits of a BIM workflow, this benefit has led to an explosion of additional perceptions of the design, including isometric details, renderings, animations, class detection reports, and so on. This provides a much better way to communicate design opportunities and decisions between project stakeholders. In the 1990s, if you wanted to create a rendering, a physical model, a daylighting model, an energy model, and an animation, you would have had to create five separate models and use five different pieces of software. There was no ability, and they're still, do, they're still doing that. I just did that down at Dow Design Group in Bayonne. They're antiquated. And again, I'll read it again. Although 3D visualization was initially conceived as one of the low-hanging fruits of a BIM workflow, this benefit has led to an explosion of additional perceptions of the design, including isometric details, renderings, animations, clash detection, reports, and so on. This provides a much better way to communicate design opportunities and decisions between project stakeholders. In the 90s, if you wanted to create a rendering, a physical model, a daylighting model, an energy model, and construction documentation, and an animation, and as built, <laughs> you would have to have had to create many different models using many different pieces of software. Pencils, paper, vellum, overlays, tracing paper, you name it. Napkins, cardboard boxes, all sorts of software. There was no ability to reuse model geometry and data between model uses. One of the key uses of BIM is the opportunity to repurpose the model for a variety of visualizations. This not only allows you to not have to recreate geometry between uses, but also ensures that you're using the most current information in each visualization because it all comes from the same source. As the capacity of cloud rendering and analysis grows, the feedback will no longer need to process locally, and you'll be able to receive feedback faster. Feedback. You'll be able to go to ShopRite more. This digital creation of the project has given us a variety of tools to communicate its aspects. Because the model is a single source of truth, it can be used in many applica uh, different applications for communicating. Models may be imported into a gaming engine <laughs> for an interactive virtual experience, allowing clients to virtually tour the building at their own pace to help understand how this building will accommodate their functional and aesthetic needs. These same virtual models can also be physically printed through rapid prototyping methods, just as such as 3D printing, creating small models in a fraction of the time it would take to build one by hand laser 3d printing but i wouldn't advise laser firearms i wouldn't advise trying to design a firearm on your computer because you may get a knock at your door go ask um excuse me uh what's who's nancy pelosi's buddy up there in new york with the bdi chuck schumer go ask chuck schumer up in albany about that and again i'll read it again these same virtual models can also be physically printed through the rapid prototyping methods, such as 3D printing, creating small models in a fraction of the time it would take to make one by hand. Many other forms. So I'm just going to stop there for a second. So I believe the legislation is going to a point where if you transmit a DWG, a RVT, or any other software platform design of something dangerous, and you don't have authorization, you can go to prison. I just want you to know that. <laughs> Many other, if you want to do that, play Xbox. Buy some skins. Many other forms of communicating through BIM are emerging as you read this book. What a show.